Uh, so what is the BPHO, the British Physics Olympiad? Um, it's two sections. So the first paper consists of two sections. Uh, the first section being short answer questions and the second section being longer answer questions. Uh, short answer questions can be anything from multiple choice to uh, three or four marks and the longer answer questions uh, can take up to 10, 20 minutes. So uh, the paper has awards based on uh, your mark. Uh, the percentages for these are on the screen. So the top 2% uh, achieve what is called the top gold, the top 6% will achieve a gold, the top 10% silver, top 20% bronze one, and the top 30% bronze two. So these are the awards for the first round of the Physics Olympiad. Uh, the completion date is shown on the screen. It's Friday the 12th of November this year. Okay. So what are the relations between uh, the BPHO and GCSE and A-level? Well, the BPHO, the uh, standard paper, is set uh, based on the A-level syllabus. So it's gonna be uh, pretty similar to almost all A-level syllabus. However, it does go beyond the A-level syllabus. And I'll talk a bit more about this later on. Um, there are certain areas where it goes beyond, but uh, we, we know about these. So that's something we can, we can prepare for. Uh, the BPHO is a challenge paper. It's not a school paper. And what I mean by that is, it's not a paper where you can expect to do as well as you would at school. So um, at school, it's it's not uncommon for the for the best students to be getting 90 percent plus uh, in, a, in an exam. And that is almost never going to happen in a BPHO paper. It's designed to be uh, quite time pressured and it's designed to be just harder. So in general, we find that in the BPHO, um, the average mark tends to be around 40 or 50 percent and the really top candidates are getting 70 or 80%. So this is, this is quite different to a school paper. And for that reason, you shouldn't expect it to be like a school paper. It will be far more time pressured and you're far more likely to see a question you haven't seen before. And that leads me on to this point. The questions are designed to be unseen. Now, this is uh, something you don't really expect from school. In, in school, if, you, if you've done a lot of past papers, you might start to recognize uh, questions coming up several times or, or similar variations of the same question. Now that's something we're not going to see in the BPHO really ever. So the questions are designed to be unique. It's designed to be the first time you've seen a question of, of that style or that exact question. And what that means is uh, it's, it's testing a different kind of problem solving ability. It's testing your, your first time problem solving ability as opposed to memorizing a technique that you've learned before. And this all contributes to uh, the paper in general being more difficult than a school paper. This, this fact that you can't just come up with a technique to answer every question uh, means that it, it does have these lower marks. And that's why I want to emphasize this point that it is a challenge paper and not a school paper. So what is the QED uh, BPHO preparation course gonna cover? Well, the first point is um, the best preparation we can do for this is past papers. We need to uh, practice previous questions in order to improve our ability to answer future questions. Now, uh, this is where I come back onto what I was talking about earlier, um, when I said there is an additional syllabus. So uh, we will be covering those additional topics uh, that are not covered in school. And uh, these are outlined in the BPHO extended topics list. So this is something that's published by the BPHO uh, each year, and we know what topics can come up. Uh, additional to school subjects. Uh, we're also going to look at understanding how to approach this different style of question. So some of the questions will be a similar style to those at school and your approach uh, will work if you use the same approach as the questions at school. However, some of the questions are going to require a different kind of thinking. Uh, an example of this might be that the questions will require uh, a type of estimation that you haven't come across at school or something like that. And we're going to cover those understandings uh, in the course. Then we're going to look at how to extract the most marks from each question. So uh, once we've identified the topic and how we're going to approach the question, how can we get as many of the marks from uh, the question as possible in the time allowed? So an example of this might be that you have one question that you're particularly strong at and one question that you're particularly weak at. And because of the unique time pressure that you find in, in the BPHO questions, uh, it might be worth your time to leave one question altogether and focus on the question you're strong at, extracting the maximum marks. As I was saying earlier, these top marks of 70 or 80%, they can be obtained 
while leaving out almost an entire question. So leaving a question is, is or something along those lines is, is really a valid technique. Uh, also, we're going to be practicing questions. That really is the key to, uh, to getting good marks in these BPHO papers, uh, practicing past papers and practicing questions and going through the solutions in class and how we can uh, how we can get to those places and hopefully that should help us in, in future questions. So how does the BPHO benefit the, uh, your application to top UK universities? Well, all the awards that I mentioned earlier are well respected and if they're put on a personal statement or something like that, uh, they are going to be well received. So anything from really bronze to upwards is worth mentioning and it will carry for a university. Um, and if you're getting gold, top gold, that, that's a really big deal. So um, universities are going to respect that a lot. One of the reasons they respect it so much is because this question style, this challenge question style that I've been talking about so much, uh, this is something that's quite similar to the style of questions you might answer at university. Uh, the style of questions does change, and so the universities uh, respect the student's understanding of that style of question. The BPHO also has a lot of similarities with some of the UK university entrance exams. Uh, so the Oxford um, aptitude test, so the maths aptitude test, the physics aptitude test, or the engineering aptitude test, the Cambridge aptitude test for the same subjects, uh, Imperial and any other uh, entrance exams that are out there, the BPHO questions will be very similar um, to the style of questions asked in that. Uh, for instance, I like to think of uh, the round one of the BPHO tends to be a pretty similar standard to uh, the Oxford PAT most years. So in terms of marks and things, um, they, they tend to be pretty close on average marks and the style of questions. So it's, a, it's really great preparation um, for those entrance exams, as well as being a well-respected uh, award in its own right. Okay, so in my own experience, well, I sat the uh, BPHO in 2016 and I achieved a top gold, so I got into that top 2%. Uh, this is in my uh, final year of A-levels. Um, I got through to round two where I got the top award again. Um, and all in all, it was a really good experience for me. Um, I think it was it was a massive benefit to my personal statement. Uh, all the universities I applied to liked it. So uh, Durham um, and Oxford, for instance, both really liked uh, having this on my personal statement. Uh, it also served as really good preparation for my Oxford path. So um, doing these papers in preparation really helped my mark in the Oxford path, which ended up being quite a good one. This is the uh, physics aptitude test, which is for entry to Oxford to do physics. Uh, and having done so much work on the BPHO before, it really boosted my score and ultimately led to me getting a place.